Hello everybody, welcome to the Personal Excellence Web Lectures. I am Celeste and today's topic is about constructive criticism, specifically how to give constructive criticism. Now I'm sure many of us probably have been in situations where we gave certain comments that uh, were well intentioned to the other party to help him or her improve yet the other party may not have responded in the way that we wanted him or her to respond so some people might have just uh, took the comment and uh, didn't really act on it afterwards some people might have heard the comment and sort of uh, felt hurt by what we said some people might have even Took, uh, taken it personally, even responding in a defensive manner or even retaliated or retorted or perhaps an argument even broke out of it in the worst scenarios and then there might be people who just ignored what we said and didn't really pay any heed to those comments so I guess for all these situations we can always put the blame on the other person and say things like Oh, the person just can't take criticism. Oh, the person just can't take any feedback that's negative. And then just sort of brush it aside. And I think it is easy to put the blame on other people. But I have found that actually almost everybody, if not everybody, wants to improve. People want to change. People want to become a better person. People are receptive to growing. And... I think it is really about how we bring our points, our intentions, our comments across rather than um, assuming that other people don't want to become better or other people are not receptive to feedback. Now obviously there are people who are not receptive to feedback but I feel like it is more helpful and constructive to focus on the things that we can do better such that we can enable others and we can convey our points across more uh, appropriately rather than putting the blame out on other people. So there is always, um, I think both parties always play a role in every communication. And in today's lecture, I want to focus about how we can give constructive criticism because I think it is a very important skill in relationships, in work, in friendships, in our relationships with our family members and when we develop this skill it can definitely improve the quality of communication and as a result our relationships with them. So without further ado let me now move to the first tip, the first suggestion on how to give constructive criticism and it is the feedback sandwich method. Um, the feedback sandwich method is actually something that I really like. I would say uh, that it, is, it provides a, a broad line template on how you should approach feedback. So see every piece of feedback you give to other people as segmented into three sections. Okay, it's sort of like in a sand the sandwich where you have the, the patty and um, the vegetables and, uh, and the sauce and so on that's in the middle and then you have the two slices of bread that's on top and, and below wedging the, the patty so it is sort of like the feedback method whereby the first layer you start off by focusing on what the person did right sort of it's like starting with something that's positive they also call the feedback method the PIP whereby P stands for positive and I stands for improvement and P stands for something that's positive again. So, so first layer, focusing on something positive and uh, for me personally, I think you should use the first layer to talk about what the person is doing right because when you do that, it provides a great foundation because it allows the person to know what he or she is doing right such that it paves the way for you to talk about what can be improved in the second layer um, as opposed to someone who just sets off the comment saying something that's negative it doesn't give the, the comment a proper base 
because you're just sort of just jumping in and zooming right down to the gaps and, and the areas on your proof that you see. You don't really help the person to understand what he or she um, is doing right in your opinion. So when you set up a comment with something that is um, that focuses right away on uh, the things that are not there, then you give the impression that you give the person the impression that you know he or she is just doing everything wrong, and uh, there's nothing good about what he or she is doing, and that's not good at all. You want to focus on what's right, such that you can then build on it further by talking about what can be uh, better in your opinion. So that will be the second layer talking about the areas of improvement and after you're done with the second layer you then move on to the third layer and the third layer would be then wrapping up the, the comment the critique with something that's positive and for me personally I think it is great to sort of um, talk about the things the positive outcomes that can come out of working on those areas of improvement so I think some people might uh, brush aside the feedback method saying that why should I compliment someone or why should I try to stroke the person's ego? Like if the person can take criticism, then the person sh should be able to take criticism no matter how it's presented. Like why should I use the feedback sandwich method? And I think the important thing is to understand that this method is actually about giving feedback constructively. It is not about stroking people's egos. It is not about giving false compliments. It is, not, it is not about saying things that you don't believe in. So the first layer, I think, is about talking the things that the person is doing right in your opinion. It is not about giving some fake compliment or trying to make the person feel good. The second layer is about the critique itself, like you know, why the things that you think can be done better. And the third is talking about the, the good things that can come out of working on those areas of improvement. So nowhere in any of these three layers do I see any anything to do with stroking people's egos or, or giving false uh, ingenuine comments because I personally am a strong advocate about uh, of authenticity. Like one of my five values, my five core values in life is authenticity and I'm all about being genuine, being truthful, being honest and I just dislike it when uh, people give comments that they don't believe in uh, or, uh, or behave in a hypocritical manner. So I definitely think like the feedback sandwich method is excellent. Um, see it as like a template for you to follow when you give feedback uh, in the future. So always see your feedback as those three segments and then provide it as such. The second tip is to focus on the situation, not the person. So I, I found like where a lot of people tend to go wrong in giving their comments or their criticisms is when they make it a personal attack. So for example, I guess one common uh, situation that many people experience is that they feel like they are family anger uh sorry they feel like their family members are just too negative so oftentimes you hear comments like oh my god like my mom is so negative or like my sister is so annoying like oh my my dad i just can't stand him and all these comments um it tends to be too focused on the person rather than the situation itself so when you give uh comments let's say to your mom saying like Mao, can you just be more positive and stop being so negative? Like your that comment is totally about her personality and her as a person, and no longer about the situation itself. And uh, where where the situation here could just be, uh, there are circumstances and instances where she exhibits negative behavior, and you wish for them to be better. So when you make it a personal attack. You then make the person um, less receptive to change, less receptive to working on what uh, on your suggested area of improvement because you have effectively made it a personal attack. You have uh, made the person feel bad about himself or herself, and it doesn't really help the person to improve.
So, well, one, so here are some tips on how you can prevent that from happening. I think the first tip would be detach the situation from the person. And this distinction is very important. So, saying someone is negative is definitely different from saying that uh, there are certain situations where this person be, uh, acts in a negative manner. So, uh, in the second example, you remove the person from the situation and you critique based on those behaviors. So when you do that, it helps the person to sort of see the situation in an objective uh, outsider point of view rather than uh, feeling like you are just attacking him or her. The second tip would be to comment on the issue but not the person. So for example, the clothes are dirty and not you are dirty. The report is late and not you are late. Again, like you can see uh, in the second comment, the person comments all about the, um, the person and it makes it a very personal attack. Whereas in the first example, you're talking about the situation, the event, the thing itself, and that sounds a lot more neutral. The third tip on how you can focus on giving comments about a situation and not a person is not to make personal attacks. So comments like, um, I'm so sick of tired uh, of this and this, or you're just so stupid, or you're just so negative. Like all these comments are sort of bordering on personal attacks and it doesn't help to person the other party to be more receptive to what you have to say. So don't make personal attacks. The fourth tip would be try to use passive voice where possible rather than active voice. So for example, you gave a bad presentation versus the presentation you gave was bad. So notice the difference here. In the second example, the presentation is made the subject. So this is like passive voice and here it helps the it helps to objectify the situation and it helps to focus the conversation or the critique on the presentation rather than the fact that the person gave the presentation which then points everything to that person. The fifth tip is to share how it affects you rather than um, focusing on what the person is doing wrong. So for example, let's say you are in a relationship, okay, and your partner is often busy and doesn't have time for you. Now, um, there are two ways you can go about doing this. The first way is to go crazy anal and just say how he is always busy all the time, he doesn't have time for you, and he is totally neglecting you and being insensitive. Now, the second approach you can use is say talk about how you notice that he has been busy and how it has affected you because it has made you feel neglected and it has made you feel that um, both of you are not spending enough time together and perhaps the relationship is moving in a direction that you do not like. So notice that when you share how something affects you, it shifts the focus from the person to you and it allows the person to objectively observe the situation and see the implications of his uh, his or her actions. So sharing how it affects you I think is a great way to allow the person to see a situation in a different light. Okay. Now, moving on to the third tip on how to give constructive criticism. The third tip is to be specific with your feedback. Um, over the course of running PE, there are many times when I receive uh, feedback and the feedback, they vary from all kinds. And I have found that the feedback that have been the most helpful to me um, are feedback that are specific, that are clear, that uh, focuses on uh, things that can be actioned upon. So whereas uh, the feedback that tends to be vague, 
don't really help much. So uh, an example of feedback that is very vague and not specific would be a feedback that tells me to just post more regularly and post more often. Whereas from my point of view, I might be thinking that I am already posting very regularly. I am already posting quite often and as often as I can, like every two or three days. So, and if we really analyze the feedback further, maybe the person doesn't really want um, more blog posts. Maybe what the person really wants is to see new articles of a certain topic, say, on setting up a new business. And if this had been uh, overtly articulated in the feedback, that would have been a lot more helpful for me to act upon. Whereas with the, the vague feedback, uh, what it results is just vague action. Like at most, I'll probably walk away with uh, a thought that, okay, um, some readers want to see more content more regularly, but there's not, not much action that can come out of that apart from doing whatever that you know I'm already doing. So specificity of the feedback is very, very important if you want to make your criticism constructive. Oh, by the way, um, when I use the term criticism, I think sometimes people see criticism to represent uh, overtly negative comments that are troll-like, uh, that flame other people. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. Like um, here, I'm using criticism as uh, the same meaning as the critique, the word critique. So really just uh, giving your comments on things that you think can be improved on. So here are some quick tips on how you can make your feedback specific and actionable because when your feedback is specific, it is actionable. The first thing is to focus more on the objective points rather than subjective opinions. So let's say if you give some a comment like, I don't like it, like it, it doesn't really help much. Whereas if you give um, a backup comments and statements and supporting points on why you don't like it, that's a lot more, more helpful. So a classic example would be say someone who, whereas like, uh, okay, or someone who wants to buy a dress. Okay, and then there are two colors and one color is brown and one color is black. So the person asks you for your opinion and you just say, oh, the black is not nice, like the brown is better. Okay, that, that is uh, a comment that can help to guide the person. But if you give the comment in a more constructive manner, focusing on the objective points rather than just the subjective opinion itself, for example, saying, oh, I don't like the black, but I like the brown, and then saying, that is because I think black is too common a color and there's just too many people wearing black and black can look quite somber and it makes you sort of blend in with the crowd. Now that is so much more helpful because it has helped the person to recognize the, um, the difference between the two, uh, the two colors, like the perception differences and um, why you think that way. So that is definitely a lot more helpful than just saying, oh, I don't like this. The second tip on how to make your feedback more specific is to break it down into key points. So don't just give a few statements that uh, sort of just over arcs like the whole um, criticism, but break it down into various key points and then give your feedback uh, point by point. So for example, let's say there's a report and um, your colleague sends the report to you. And then there are several things that can be uh, worked through in the report. So if you give specific comments point by point, like say, okay, paragraph one is good, but paragraph two, like I think there can be more examples. Um, paragraph three, I think there are several mistakes and um, the facts are not in line with the system and, and things like this. It is a lot more helpful than saying, giving a very, um, blank, like giving like a blanket comment saying that, oh, I think some of the facts are wrong and I think um, it is just not very well checked. Like it doesn't really tell the person anything. Okay, so giving your feedback into uh, key points is very helpful. The third tip on how to make your feedback specific 
would be to give specific examples of each point where possible. So let's say you feel like uh, your mom is very negative. Okay, so saying something like you're so negative or you tend to be very negative is not as helpful as say if you talk about the two or three key uh, incidences where she exhibited negative behavior or even um, the two to three scenarios where she tends to exhibit negative behavior. So giving specific examples like this helps the person to become a lot more conscious of where he or she is uh, doing something that's not in line with expectations. Because there are times where the person really might just be unconscious and unaware about that. So when you can pin it down to the specific examples, that will really be very, very helpful. Okay, moving on to the fourth tip on how to give constructive criticism. Comment on the things that can be actioned upon. So I found that um, when people talk about the things that can't be actioned upon, it rarely serves any purpose and it usually leaves the person feeling a lot worse about him or herself. So let's say in an example where you just, uh, your friend just rented a new apartment and you visit uh, her to just uh, like say hi and then to check out the place and to just give the comments and then you, re you realize like the apartment doesn't look good, the location isn't good and you just personally don't like it at all. You don't like the color, you don't like the layout, you don't like anything about it. But the thing is your friend has already uh, paid the rent for 12 months and the rent is not refundable. So saying something like you know um, this apartment is so bad like, I think you should just move out right away is not helpful at all if the situation is not reversible. You're only going to make your friend feel bad about the choice. Um, or in another example, say your friend just had a haircut. Okay, um, She cut her hair really really short from very long tresses all the way down to like a bob and you just hate it. You hate that look. Now saying that your her hairstyle is very ugly and it, it just doesn't, really doesn't help because the hair has been cut away like she can't do anything about it unless you expect her to wear a wig. So um, you have to be sensitive when you give uh, comments. Like talk about the things that can be actioned upon rather than uh, things that can't be. So um, if we talk about say the, the first example of the apartment, maybe you can give um, comments on what are the things that can be done in the apartment to make it nicer, live, uh, livelier, you know, uh, more conducive without uh, necessarily talking about how you dislike the place. Um, in the second example, maybe you can talk about how the, the plus points of the new haircut and then you can talk about how um, you, you prefer her with the longer hair but you think that the, the, the bob look is a different look and it's interesting and and the whatever things about it that you personally feel resonate with you. So it is not about giving fake comments once again because I don't believe in giving comments that you don't believe in but I think it's about focusing on what's good and, and focusing on what can be actioned upon. Okay, the fifth tip on how to give constructive criticism is to give recommendations on how the person can improve and I think this is very important because there can be there, are, there tend to be people who like to critique and like to talk a lot but they don't they're not very helpful in terms of helping the person to improve and when you can give specific recommendations it really helps the person to sort of get where you're coming from and to guide the person in a good direction And last but not least, the sixth tip is not to make assumptions. And I think this is very important because um, 
when you give critique, you should definitely focus on the situation, not the person. And when you focus on the situation, it's really about giving comments that are based on the facts and based on the observations that are true and rooted in reality. Whereas uh, when you give uh, making assumptions, it's sort of like making conclusions based on what you see, which may or may not be true. And when you make assumptions, it if the assumption is wrong, and if the assumption has a negative connotation, not only does it embarrass the person, it also embarrasses you. So for example, let's say in Toastmasters or in a public speaking uh, forum and someone is giving a speech, a presentation which is evalu evaluated on and the person is incredibly nervous and the person can't seem to bring the points across in the convincing manner, even for getting lines here and there. So during the evaluation stage, um, during the critiquing stage, one of the judges then say, I think you should spend more time preparing because you obviously did not prepare uh, yesterday night. And then here, what the person has effectively done is to make an assumption that the person didn't prepare. And this may be true. And this may not be true. It may well be possible that the person spent one whole week, two whole weeks trying to pre uh, prepare for the presentation. And what has really happened was that she just became nervous and she just forgot everything. So by making the assumption that the person didn't prepare as much as she should, that is uh, being insensitive and uh, being unempathetic and it also makes the person come across as um, sort of like a jerk as well, especially if the assumption is wrong. So you want to focus on the facts. You want to focus on the situation and there is totally no need to draw any conclusions from what you observe um, for any reason at all. Like the point of constructive criticism is to talk about what you observe and what can be improved upon from what you observe. The po a constructive criticism is not about drawing conclusions, uh, making erroneous statements, and trying to draw links because you cannot assume things about other people. Mm, there, there are always many, many different reasons uh, why something happens and what you can do is to take what you see, take what you've got and comment on that and not to try to uh, make conclusions about someone or be it the person's agenda or personality or background. Okay, so that's it for today's web lecture on constructive criticism. I hope you found the tips useful and do apply them when you have a critique or a comment to give to other people and see how it changes. Now, if you truly, truly apply the tips the way that um, I have been sharing them, you're going to find that the kind of response that you get to your critiques and your comments in the future is going to be dramatically different because when you truly bring your point across in the right manner, people just respond differently. I have found that it is really about how you bring something across because um, there can be two people with the same intention trying to say the same thing and uh, with uh, with good uh, of good agenda and the other party can respond totally different to each of them and it is really because um, the person who brought out the points in the in an empathetic in a constructive fashion is able to reach out to the person better than someone who delivers it in a cut, in an in-your-face, insensitive, unconstructive manner. So focus on how you can be constructive in your comments and when you do, you're going to find that people will become a lot more receptive to you, a lot more understanding and a lot more ready to act on your feedback. So that's it. For more web lectures, subscribe to youtube.com slash Celestine Chua. To read the article on constructive criticism, go to the website which is personalexcellence.co that's .co slash blog slash constructive dash criticism.
And that's it. So look forward to seeing you guys in the next web lecture. Bye.